The harlot goddess reigns over the New York Supreme Court. Is this a principality taking power? In a sign of just how pagan the beliefs of the USA are becoming, a new statue in New York City was just put on top of the Supreme Court building, which you know is a government building, the symbol of law for the state of New York. And it stands next to figures including Confucius, Justinian, and Moses, all lawgivers, by placing this sex goddess Next to Moses and the other lawgivers, New York is symbolically saying that pagan sex practices and child sacrifice now have equal footing in their state with the Bible, Moses, and other traditional sources of American law. How do you feel about that? What does it say about the future of the nation? As the New York Times put it, quote, The statue is meant to represent the spirit of women to channel... Notice the use of that word, Roe v. Wade, back into law, end of quote. And to stand for women's reproductive rights, in other words, you know, abortion and child sacrifice. However, there is a big difference between Moses, Justinian, and this goddess. That's right, you caught it too. Every other statue on the Supreme Court building was a human. This goddess is not. She is a fallen angel, a principality, or power as Paul calls it. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual forces of wickedness in heavenly places, Ephesians 6.12. New York has blatantly placed a statue of a demonic principality over their legal system. Now, statues in and of themselves don't command power. I mean, I think we know that. But they are symbolic of the power the actual principality has over the hearts and minds of the people who worship it. In Deuteronomy 32, 16 through 17, it states, They stirred him, meaning God, to jealousy with strange gods. And and this one is certainly strange. With abominations, they provoked him to anger. They sacrificed to demons that were no gods, to gods They had never known to new gods that had come recently, whom your fathers had never dreaded. This passage associates pagan gods with demons and warns God's people not to be involved with this sort of idolatry. The statue is named Now, N-O-W, and the eight-foot goddess was placed on the Supreme Court building to signify that it is now reigning over the laws of New York to claim New York's legal system for itself. It isn't the influence of the past. It is the influence of now, which is also the three-letter acronym for the National Organization of Women, by the way. According to the artist, the goddess stands on a lotus symbolizing wisdom and has goat horns indicating sovereignty and autonomy. Its arms and legs are depicted as tree roots to say it is well-rooted. And a delicate collar nods to the late Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who often wore such collars with her traditional black robe. At least that is what we are told by the sculptor and the statue's promoters. However, anyone familiar with ancient pagan goddesses can quickly see that the statue's iconography is drawn from the Egyptian Hathor, the Sumerian Inanna, the Babylonian Ishtar, and the Canaanite Astarte. All of these names reference the same entity, however, the same demonic principality or fallen angel. Throughout history, they have all had very similar depictions, and all of them were their culture's fertility and sex deity. Essentially, they were all the same demon, just with different names. In Revelation 17, the beast is described as having seven heads or kingdoms, and on these heads are blasphemous names. Now, in our opinion, they are the names of the gods of those kingdoms. The names change on each head, but the demonic principalities stay the same. They just change their names to be culturally relevant to the next kingdom that comes along. So Inanna is the same as Hathor, the same as Ishtar, the same as Astarte, etc., etc. For instance, in ancient Israel, the team of Baal and Astarte were the primary opposition to Yehovah, you know, our God. And in the New Testament, the one world governance system of Mystery Babylon is depicted as a harlot. 
So, is this statue a symbolic representation of the harlot, Mystery Babylon, laying claim to New York City and eventually to the USA? Let's keep looking into this. But first, a big shout out to Katie Tomasello of our video team, who not only produced this video, but also did the research for us. Now, back to the statue and the symbols that cover her. As you are about to see, these symbols do not mean what the sculptor said they mean. They all have very deep, dark, satanic meanings. So either that sculpture was conscious of these other meanings, the deep, dark meanings, and lied about the satanic overtones, or she was unconscious of them, but inspired by a dark force to add them to the sculpture. And what does this say about the people who chose to put this sculpture on top of their Supreme Court to rule over their laws? Think about what this says about where the nation of the USA is headed. Remember, the statue itself has no power, but represents the power of the principality over the hearts and souls of the people worshiping it. Now, in terms of the symbols, the Sumerian goddess Inanna was the first of these goddesses to come on the scene back in ancient Sumer. She was the consort of Enlil. In this previous video on this channel, what was Satan's real name, we provided a pretty good case based on Isaiah 14 that Satan went by the name of Enlil back in ancient Sumer, and he was the head of their pantheon. A link to that video is down in the description. Inanna was said to ride a beast, and carvings of her doing so have been found in ancient Near East. This is significant. Because, you know, the harlot, Mystery Babylon, is also depicted as riding a beast. So the harlot, John is telling us then, is the same principality as Inanna. The statue, called now, has its hair twisted in the shape of horns. The symbolism comes directly from Inanna, who was depicted with twisted horns on her head. Her hair horns are meant to make her look like a goat which you probably recognize, is currently known as the Baphomet. The statue is made out of bronze, which is pretty important because the sacrifices to Moloch were done in a bronze statue. It had outstretched arms which were heated red hot, and living children were then placed into the idol's hands, and they died there. This statue, then, has direct links to Satan, Mystery Babylon, Moloch, and child sacrifice, quite a group to be intentionally shown as reigning over the laws of New York. The statue stands on a lotus flower. And although the sculpture says this symbolizes wisdom, the lotus flower comes from ancient Egypt and was a psychoactive plant, also known as the blue Egyptian lotus, the blue water lily, and the sacred blue lily. In other words, the goddess stands on drug culture. Also, very, very appropriate because drugs can lead to sexual immorality. She has hands and feet which are twisted into the shape of tree branches. Mankind's fall, of course, involved the tree, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and the sinuous, serpent-like nature of the statue's arms and legs could possibly evoke the biblical serpent in the garden. That's Satan, of course, and the occult is just obsessed with serpent imagery. In Inanna's Canaanite form, she's depicted as holding snakes. In Egypt with Hathor, we see a serpent coming out of the forehead of the goddess, like it's coming out of the third eye or the eye of Horus. It means the serpent is coming out of your mind and soul because that's where it was residing. So, this aspect of the statue evokes the fall of mankind, with them moving from trust in God and His word to trusting in what they believe themselves is good or evil. This matches perfectly with what the New York Times said about the statue. Quote, maybe she can help channel us back to reinstating Roe versus Wade, end of quote. The sculpture was a, quote, magical, hybrid plant animal, end of quote. Notice the words that the New York Times was using, channel, hybrid, and magic, Luciferian, satanic paganism at their core. The statue, then, is a depiction of the harlot who rides the beast, 
whom humans first began to personalize as Inanna all the way back in ancient Sumer. Now, this statue stands on the Supreme Court building of New York, symbolizing the people rejecting Moses and the Ten Commandments and giving themselves over and their laws over to a goddess. I mean, if there was ever a golden calf moment in our culture, this is it, to say the least. And at the Nelson Walters Channel, we believe this is much more than symbolism. It is exactly what is occurring in the souls of people. Jonathan Kahn has been promoting the idea that the return of the ancient gods is upon us. Although we do not agree with Khan on many, many things, we do agree with him on this. The demonic principalities and powers that have existed for ages are being given power again. Now, these powers were diminished by the rise of Christianity, you know, for 20 centuries. But now that is changing. Look at how Revelation 17 describes the harlot and its relationship to the beast. Here is the mind that has wisdom. The seven heads of the beast are seven mountains or kingdoms on which the woman sits. They are also seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. And when he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth and of the seven, and going to perdition. Revelation 17, 9 through 11. So the harlot has been around a long time, and it has sat or ruled over seven historic kingdoms throughout history. Babel, Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, which is Babel renewed, Persia, Greece, Rome, and the coming seventh head. The goddess has been around a long time, ruling the kings of the earth, with her sexual deviancy. She has been held down for the last 2,000 years by Christians spiritually standing firm in the armor of God. But now, the goddess is returning again to rule. That shows you where we might be on Revelation 17's timeline of kingdoms and kings. And if this goddess is a real demonic force, it tells us that we should oppose it by the prescription given to us by God in Ephesians 6, not by voting or by any kind of physical, political means, because Ephesians 6 is our prescription for opposing all such principalities. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against the spiritual hosts of wickedness in heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. We're definitely in the evil day and having done all to stand. Ephesians 6, 10 through 13, figuring out how to put on the armor and stand in it is what we're commanded to do. And you might be surprised to learn that the symbols of this coming one world demonic government are popping up all over the place in Europe and the USA. This statue is just the latest one. Click right here to keep watching and discover the multitude of statues and symbols of demonic principalities on government buildings and in government events all over the world. Till then, this is Nelson, and I'll see you there.